Okay, members, we're going to move on to House uh, File 1684, which is the Transportation Budget Bill. Chair Hornstein, would you like to move your bill, be recommended for placement on the General Register, and tell us about your budget proposal? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I move that House File 1684 be re-referred to the General Register. Thank you. Um, yes, Madam please. Chair. Please, <laughs> yeah, tell us about okay. your bill. Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members. I'm very pleased to present uh, House File 1684, which is this year's Omnibus Transportation Finance and Policy Bill. Uh, I, uh, those of you who are, uh, who've heard this bill before in transportation and taxes, you'll know that my opening is, will be familiar to you. Um, I have never really dedicated a bill in anyone's memory before in uh, almost 20 years here in the Minnesota House, but this year I'm doing this I'm doing a dedication of this bill uh, for my friend and our former colleague, many of you on this committee served with him, uh, Representative Bernie Leader. Uh, Representative Leader uh, passed away uh, this last summer. Um, he was my friend, my mentor. Uh, he chaired the Transportation Finance Policy uh, Committee for many years, a World War II veteran. Um, and he taught me something really important about crafting a transportation bill, which I hope I have done in his memory and honor. Uh, and that is to make sure that all parts of the state uh, benefit uh, from uh, the provisions in the bill and that all uh, modes of transportation are covered in the bill. What I think was so unique, there are many things that were uniquely wonderful about Representative Leader, but when it came to transportation, one thing I really admired about him is that um, his background was a road engineer uh, and he lived in Crookston, Minnesota, but he cared deeply about transit in the Metro, uh, in addition to roads and bridges in greater Minnesota. And so he taught me as a Metro legislator that how important it is to care about what's going on in greater Minnesota as well. And so that's why um, when we did a bill in uh, 2013, I uh, had the chance to, to chair this committee then. Uh, for the first time, we developed the Corridors of Commerce program, which uh, had many benefits for Greater Minnesota, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, for important corridors like Highway 14, 23, 60, among others. Uh, this year, we have specific money for small cities uh, in that spirit. And so uh, this bill does that. Um, it covers all corners of the state, all modes of transportation, uh, transit, roads, bridges, active transportation. Uh, and another thing that Representative Leader taught me is that um, because transportation has so many dedicated funds, we don't use general fund a little bit now uh, as a result of some changes that were made by 2017, in 2017, but overwhelmingly the transportation bill uh, utilizes constitutionally dedicated funds for roads and bridges. And so when Representative Leader passed our last uh, really significant increase uh, in those dedicated funds in, in 2008, uh, he taught me that um, those funds can be put to very good use. Uh, and so we have uh, new bridges as a result of that funding in Winona, in St. Cloud, in Hastings, the Stillwater Bridge, um, and many new important road and uh, bridge projects accrued as a result of that bill and, and many important transit projects in the metro area. So what I'd like to do, members, is just quickly go through uh, some of the finance-related provisions that would be of interest uh, to the Ways and Means Committee uh, as it relates to House File 1684, and we'll get into some more detail about that as well. But in Article 3, I wanted to call your attention to um, these are the revenue raisers I was talking about. And um, uh, we need new revenue, uh, obviously. Our road and bridge system continues to deteriorate. Our transit system is not keeping up with need. But uh, we have um, in Article 3 uh, a um, inflation adjustment to the fee on motor fuels. Uh, this is a very significant change from the bill we brought to this committee in 2019. That uh, bill had a 20 cent increase in the fee on motor fuels. There is no increase in the fee in motor fuels here, only an inflationary adjustment, which amounts to about uh, a penny a year over the next five years. 
uh, and that would be translating to $9 per motorist in the first year, a total of eight, uh, around $18 per motorist for the biennium. So this is a very modest increase, but as you'll see in a minute, uh, it goes a long way. Uh, we also have a registration tax depreciation schedule adjustment uh, that adds some progressivity uh, to our um, dedicated funding stream. Uh, those that are purchasing uh, newer and more expensive vehicles will pay a slight increase. Uh, those with uh, older vehicles will be held harmless or uh, even pay less in their license tab fees. We have an MVEST rate adjustment as well uh, that simply aligns the um, sales tax on automobiles with the broader sales tax rate, uh, a small adjustment, but it goes a long way. Uh, we have a Metro Transit tax uh, increase, sales tax increase, again, structured very differently from 2019. Uh, this uh, shrinks the geographic area where that tax would be levied only in areas where transit is being used. Uh, we dedicate uh, half of the uh, electric vehicle surcharge to electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Uh, then quickly, members, there are some other uh, taxes and fees, not necessarily as um, uh, significant as what I just described in Art Article 3, but in Article 6, uh, under finance and policy, we have uh, some fees around self-service kiosks, uh, for uh, uh, driver's licenses, that's uh, a deputy registrar initiative. We have a soybean meal hauling uh, special permit. Uh, so there's some fees for MnDOT in that. We have a motorcycle endorsement fee uh, increase. We eliminate fee stacking for driver's license reinstatements. So I'll get into that a little bit later when we talk about equity. Uh, we ask railroads to fund a couple of ad additional rail inspectors. Uh, so there's an assessment there. There's a rental car registration fee change. Uh, that's COVID related to help the um, uh, rental car industry. Uh, no general fund impact there. Uh, that's represent West initiative. We have Metropolitan Council bonding authority for regional capital bonds. That's something that's been carried in this committee before. Uh, and we also make an adjustment to, for the city of Minneapolis. They have a value capture district for transit. We allow uh, transit ways in addition to streetcars to be covered under that. So members, just um, very quickly, I wanted to just highlight it with some very specific figures on some of the, the major revenue raisers in this bill. Um, the uh, adjustment for inflation, uh, the indexing of the motor vehicle uh, fuel fee, uh, that comes out to 298 million in the first biennium, uh, 265 million in the second. Uh, the MVEST adjustment uh, uh, goes from um, 30 to 47 million. And then the registration fee, uh, uh, 2223 is 68 million up to 79 million in the out years. Uh, for transit, uh, that sales tax um, uh, starts at um, 376 uh, uh, million up to uh, 540. Uh, and then we have the MVEST adjustment for transit, and that goes uh, from, up from 9 million up to 21 million. So um, members, I wanted to, uh, sometimes we just sort of look at the numbers on the spreadsheet, and I wanted to just take a couple minutes here to, to actually visually show you what this money is going for. Um, I think it's Again, so important uh, with these dedicated funds we have for transportation. You know, our transportation infrastructure is in very poor shape and it's getting worse. We have underinvested and disinvested for a very long time. Infrastructure is a priority now at the federal level. Um, and um, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that uh, were shared with us in the transportation committee. So you get a sense of where these funds are going. Mr. Howard staff could, um, roll a video from Melrose, Minnesota right now, I would appreciate that. I'm Brian Klemke, I'm from Stearns County, and I'm a bridge inspector. As a bridge inspector, we look at the concrete, look at the cracks, look at the corrosion. We have severe corrosion going on on the rebar, which 
which holds this bridge in place. And a lot of that you can hear from a solid to a, a hollowness like that. You've lost a lot of strength in your bridge on the underside. It's all about safety. We all want to go home and see our kids. It gets very frustrating when you can come down here. Anybody can walk down here and see the shape of this bridge that it's in. And the main reason this is happening is, is these bridges aren't getting replaced as soon as they should just due to funding. We definitely need the funding. Once it starts, it don't stop until it's over. It's troublesome. Uh, the second uh, set of uh, just these are these next ones are just quickly, Madam Chair, some still photographs. Uh, the Transportation Committee was very active in our mini session in Winona. Uh, we uh, we looked at the underside of that new Winona bridge uh, from the from a boat on the river. Uh, we had an excellent tour from the Winona County engineer, Mr. Kramer, and he showed us so this. The, he showed us a lot of different roads. I don't think this was the specific road he showed us, but I, I asked him to share some pictures of some roads in Winona County for the Transportation Committee. And you can see on the right side and in the middle just how corroded this county road is. Um, uh, could you, next slide, please. Again, here's a close up. Uh, many, many roads around the state uh, are in this type of condition. Next slide. Now we have, uh, again, a, a truck passing through and um, maybe a little bit of patching on the right side, but it doesn't really address the problem. So uh, that is a county road in Winona County. And then finally, I wanted to give you a sense of what we're buying with our Metro sales tax for transit. Uh, this next slide is a map uh, that shows uh, what, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, there we have more. More, more of Winona County roads. Uh, but you'll see the um, lines here are uh, bus, rapid, bus rapid transit lines. Of course, we have the blue line going northwest. Uh, but the Metro Transit uh, sales tax envisioned this bill is to build these or build out a system of arterial bus rapid transit lines. This has been a wildly successful mode of transit. The A-line that goes up and down Snelling Avenue is an example of this. So we want to build 11 additional lines uh, in the coming years. That would make uh, our metro area the bus rapid transit leader in the country. Uh, this is again a, a type of uh, transit that has been supported, I think, by both sides of the aisle. Um, we envision that as a key use of the metro sales tax. We even have that in some rider language in the bill. So I wanted to just pictorially represent that for the committee. And let me just conclude my presentation uh, with something that I, I'm very particularly uh, proud of in this bill. Uh, and that is the very important equity provisions. Um, we uh, uh, need not be reminded of the historical moment we are in and the challenges we face with racial justice and equity uh, in our city and region, uh, metropolitan area and region. And so I just wanted to highlight four uh, provisions which I think are extremely important. First of all, the driver's license for all uh, legislation, Representative Winkler's bill uh, that we heard last year on the House floor is incorporated in the transportation omnibus uh, because the, the funding for this comes from the driver and vehicle services account. And so um, we have the uh, that in this bill, we had incredible testimony. I, if people want to look over, I think one of the most moving uh, hearings that I've experienced in my time here was the hearing we had on this. We had a total of 17 people testify. Uh, we had Ovita San Francisco uh, talk about uh, how this impacts her and her community. Uh, we had um, Bishop John Quinn from the Winona and Rochester Diocese speaking on behalf of the Catholic Conference talking about the moral imperative for this driver license for all bill. It's supported by law enforcement, the Chamber of Commerce. I think this is a, a important a, a bill. We had some bipartisan support for this in the Transportation Committee this year. Second equity provision I'm very excited about uh, deals with a project called Reconnect Rondo. And we, I, I met in two incredible people through this process, Mr. Marvin Anderson, Mr. Keith Baker, who are spearheading this. We give that project planning money. 
And what it does is, I think in many ways, provide re reconciliation and hope uh, to a community, Rondo in St. Paul, that was cut in half and destroyed by the construction of I-94. This is a critical equity provision in this bill. Uh, Representative Richardson carried it and um, uh, it is very significant. Uh, we have driver's license reinstatement. This has been, this is a provision carried by Representative Becker Finn. Uh, this has tremendous and important uh, equity uh, considerations. Uh, anytime we fund uh, public transportation, whether it's in greater Minnesota or in the metro, uh, this is also important uh, to get people to their jobs, to get those essential workers uh, who really literally kept us alive during the, uh, uh, and continue to during this uh, historic pandemic. Um, you know, most of the rider, or at least half of the riders, uh, riding transit now are grocery store workers, hospital workers, janitors. Um, we have shown why transit is so important and so essential uh, as an equity issue. Uh, and then there's some, also some provisions uh, uh, for MnDOT around um, uh, indigenous uh, uh, contracting uh, in and around reservations. Um, also important equity provision. So uh, to conclude my presentation, Madam Chair, um, you know, we, we look at these spreadsheets and we look at the numbers, but transportation is ultimately about people. Uh, it's about the farmer that uh, has to get uh, his or her goods to market on uh, safe and um, uh, modern roads. Uh, we and a supply chain again. Let's go back to the uh, pandemic here. Our transportation supply chain literally keeping us alive. Uh, that could be freight movements, vaccines. Uh, this whole that's all dependent on a strong and modern transportation system. Um, it's the uh, student trying to get to uh, school or university or college again, whether it's in the metro or greater Minnesota. You know, it is um, about someone I, I take the, uh, uh, you know, pre-pandemic and, and hopefully very soon again, I'll be taking the green line to the Capitol. Uh, it's, I've seen so many examples of mothers and fathers taking uh, their kids grocery shopping. They rely on the green line to get from their homes to the Midway Shopping Center. Um, it's people like that using transit, senior citizens using Metro Mobility, which we fund through the sales tax in this uh, bill. Um, so it is truly multimodal. It covers all states. Many people benefit from this bill. Um, I ask for your support. I'm very happy to uh, answer questions. I do also have an A24 amendment. I don't know if you want to take that now or later in the uh, hearing, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, your mic is off. Sorry about that. Thank you, Chair Hornstein. Um, yes, I would like for you to move your author's amendment now and then explain it to us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, um, I guess the simplest way to explain this, and I will have uh, Andy Lee from, from House Physicals, Fiscal as well, because I think it is a little more complicated than I'm about to, to uh, uh, explain. But um, if, if we have some monopoly players on the committee, the, it, it, about six o'clock last night, um, I was informed by nonpartisan staff that we had landed on bank error in your favor, collect $200. Uh, instead, uh, there was um, some recalculations that were done by driver and vehicle services. So it turned out that bank error was collect $4,500,000. Mm -hmm. And so what this um, amendment corrects is, uh, is that uh, error. Uh, Four million of that dollars goes back into the driver vehicle services fund and 500,000 to the general fund. I should give you the context for this. This is uh, relates to fee stacking in the uh, driver's license reinstatement bill. And so that just in, in short, uh, Madam Chair, it just costs a lot less money than we originally thought. We're taking that additional approximate $500,000 in the general fund and putting it into the Safe Routes for School program. I should note that we do have $39.6 million uh, over base in our bill. Uh, quite a bit of that goes to capital security improvements. Uh, it's, the, the rest is scattered through various uh, MnDOT and Met Council uh, allocations. But um, uh, that will go into the Safe Routes to School program, which has been a popular bipartisan program over the years. 
So that is the amendment, um, Madam Chair, if you'd like uh, House Fiscal Services or House Fiscal Staff to go through that uh, in more detail, um, I think it would be appropriate. Okay, to the fiscal staff, can you walk us through that, those numbers? Certainly, Madam Chair and members, I'm working off of the um, A24 amendment to House File 1684, the first engrossment. And the first few changes on line 1.3 through uh, on line 1.3 is a total correction for the summary of appropriations to uh, the Department of Transportation. Then on line 1.4 is a um, correction in, or a change in the general fund amount for the Department of Transportation. And th these are the, the summary um, numbers in the first two pages. And then um, on lines 1.5 through 1.8 are corrections to the uh, county state aid highway and municipal state aid street fund appropriations as a result of a revenue note that was received uh, in taxes. Um, so because uh, the changes to the um, constitutionally dedicated transportation funds hit uh, go, go to different um, funds, including the, um, the two state aid uh, amounts, those numbers have to be changed whenever there's an updated in the revenue estimate. Um, and then the um, next change is on line 1.9, and that is increasing by 500,000 the um, uh, appropriation for safe routes to school. And that's a general fund appropriation increase. On lines 1.10 through 1.15 are the corrections in the actual appropriations for uh, county state aid highways and municipal state aid streets funds, and this was referenced earlier in the amendment. Um, then there is a, another correction to the um, Department of Public Safety um, summary total on line 1.15, um, a correction to a rider for the Department of Driver and Vehicle Services um, that it only applies for one year of a certain appropriation amount, in, um, and that's on line 1.16. And then as the chair was mentioning earlier, uh, changes to the amounts that are transferred from the um, vehicle services operating account in the special revenue fund to the general fund as a result of uh, information from the Department of Driver and Vehicle Services that um, the legislature received yesterday. Um, and that language in the, um, in the first and gross bill is on page 20 and starts on line 20.8. Um, and uh, effectively what the amendment language would do is reduce the transfer from the vehicle services operating account um, from 4 million in this biennium and 6 million in the, in the um, FY24-25 biennium and reduce that to from a total of 10 million down to 1.6 million um, only in FY2024. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the amendment. All right, so thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, members, is there any questions to the A24 amendment? All right. If not, Chair Hornstein renews his motion to adopt the A24 amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. Okay, members. Um, uh, we're going to open up the floor for questions, and I see Representative Petersburg. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and and um, and to Chair Hornstein as well. I, first, I, I just want to say that it's been it's been great working with you. Um, you have really put together uh, a real good working relationship, and I appreciate that so much. Uh, there there are a lot of parts in this bill that that we do have some similarities in which we agree to, and you were you were willing to hear some of our our positions as well. But there are some major issues that, of course, we just philosophically change. And so uh, a couple of those uh, that I think I really want to touch base on, since Ways and Means is really more responsible for financing and budgeting an area, I'm not going to go into a lot of the the uh, policy issues that there are many of, because I think we want to get home tonight sometime, but we'll deal with that on the floor. But a couple of things, uh, if I could ask uh, Chair Hornstein, um, a lot of the, the new growth in finances and revenue, um, uh, gasoline tax increases, um, the, the increase in, in sales tax for Med Council and so forth, I thought I 
I was listened fairly carefully to the governor and even listened to Met Council, uh, and neither one of them asked for any of these. Um, what is what precipitated the the notion that we needed to increase these fees at this particular time? Chair Hornstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Petersburg, and I would just also thank you for your comments. Um, I also deeply appreciate the partnership we've had, the frequent communication we've had, problem solving that we've done over the session, the committee. So thank you for that. Uh, and I think that a good bipartisan spirit that we have, uh, even though, again, as you point out, there are some big differences uh, in the, particularly the revenue sections of this bill. So let me just uh, answer this, your excellent question in two ways. Number one, you know, I'm looking for some kind of uh, middle ground here, something that can move transportation forward, where we uh, maybe hear some, borrow some ideas from your side of the aisle, but but stick to I think the 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 broader philosophy that I have and, and Representative Leader has, which is that if we are going to deal with our infrastructure crisis, and it is a crisis, you saw the bridge inspector in Burns County. I mean, this is happening all over the state. We, if we don't make investments now, um, not only is it going, we have safety issues, but it, it's gonna be really, really expensive if we continue to procrastinate and not add new revenue. So um, it was important to add new revenue. Now, uh, we don't have the, you, your side of the aisle spoke loud and clear two years ago. You didn't want a 20 cent gas tax increase. So we don't have a 20 cent gas tax increase. We have a very modest, $9 a year per motorist uh, fee uh, that simply keeps up with inflation. The road and bridge construction industry employs tens of thousands of people, laborers, contractors. Uh, they can't, it's very difficult to keep up with inflation. Inflation in the construction industry is higher than broader inflation. So we uh, tag this uh, index to the construction uh, inflator index, as they do in the state of Alabama, which recently passed this indexing legislation just within a year or two ago. So we do that because it's necessary to invest in infrastructure, but we're doing it differently than 2019 because we heard your concern about the size of the uh, increase we had before. Um, on, on transit, uh, we, uh, again, um, we have a, a, a vision, a bold vision, to create the best bus rapid transit system in the United States of America. We can do that with the allocation in this bill. We have a vision where Metro Transit uh, can simply cannot keep up with the Metro mobility costs. That's a mandated program. We need additional money so our seniors and people with disabilities uh, can get around the region. That's, what that, that's why we feel urgency on that. And our local bus system has, um, uh, deficits, uh, you know, as far as the eye can see in terms of, um, you know, uh, needing to uh, just keep up with the, the needs and demands of our local bus service. So that's why we have that. Um, you know, so that that is why we felt the need to do this. Uh, we, the last piece, uh, Representative Petersburg, is that the, the other thing we heard loud and clear from your side of the aisle is that you you were very upset the, with the fact that we clawed back the nearly $400 million in auto parts uh, sales um, dedication that you had a statutory dedication in 2017. Uh, we clawed that back in, in uh, 2019 because we didn't believe that it was appropriate to have that much general fund in transportation with all the dedicated revenue we have. I still believe that, but I think it's a huge not in your direction that we don't touch that this year. So members, uh, and on the sales tax, by the way, we shrink the geographic area that, that is, um, uh, again, in a nod to concerns you've raised, we shrink the geographic area so that really the transit using areas of the Metro are funding that, not some of the, the exurban areas. So this is an effort to just figure out how can we move forward still um, move forward politically uh, by making some concessions to your side, but move forward in terms of our, in our crumbling infrastructure that's in sore need of immediate and urgent investment. So this bill is kind of a middle ground. We don't do nothing. 
I don't, I think it would be irresponsible to have a lights on bill, uh, but we kind of shrink it back from 2019, kind of a middle path, maybe the road not taken uh, to quote uh, the poet Robert Frost. Uh, uh, and so that's a new road that we haven't taken before that we're, we're uh, uh, plowing here new ground. And, and I hope that this can provide some sort of starting point for our negotiations and when we get to conference committee. So thanks for the question, Represent Petersburg. Um, Representative Garofalo. I, just, uh, I have more questions, Petersburg? Madam Chair, if I could. Okay, let's go back to Represent Petersburg. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, I, I, I understand all of that. My concern is the fact that the governor and his budget proposal, uh, Med Council and their proposal, even, even the Department of Transportation with the dollars coming in from the federal government uh, felt that they didn't need any additional funding this year for that. And the governor's address uh, addresses that he has to the Minnesota public said many times how often we have to deal with COVID related expenses and how everybody is taking their responsibility. And, and it's, it's concerning to me that we've increased it. So if I could continue to ask a few more questions of, of Chair Hornstein, my question, and maybe this is for uh, Mr. Lee or somebody in staff, of all the, the new revenue increases that you have, what's the total amount over this next biennium uh, that's in your bill? Um, I'm not sure I can answer both of those questions. Okay, I, I, thought, I heard two questions there. Mm -hmm. okay. So Representative Petersburg, to your, to your uh, question about the governor, um, you know, I know he's still committed to infrastructure spending, but, but what I will say to that, I'll just conclude with what the minority lead said it in the last bill. I mean, he, he, he said to the DFL, you know, you're, you're, we're the House of Representatives. We can do things independently of the governor. And I would argue of the Senate. You know, there's sort of a narrative, well, the Senate isn't going to accept any of this. Therefore, we shouldn't do it. So I, am, I would answer your question, Representative Petersburg, is that, you know, I made a judgment call uh, to um, craft a bill that we felt took some Republican ideas, took some ideas from the governor from a couple years ago, and really came up with, I think, a, a modest but important uh, new set of investments to, again, just move us forward. Uh, we're going to get some federal money, uh, both uh, hopefully in the um, American Jobs Act and the reauthorization of the transportation bill that comes later in the year. We're going to need to match that money. We may miss out on that money if we don't at least provide some new revenue. Uh, but we, um, you know, we're, we're the House of Representatives. We are a, um, you know, we are our own <laughs> entity here. And so um, we, we take advice from the executive branch. We're conscious of what the Senate is interested in. But, but this is a bill that I, I think reflects us as a, as a Minnesota House. And that's, that's my job. That's your job. That's all of our jobs to reflect our constituents' interests and, and craft a bill based on that, not, not what other branches of government or the Senate is interested in. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we raised $618 million total in the first biennium. And then uh, in 24-25, we have a total of $1 billion, $3 million. Uh, so that is a small fraction of what we did in 2019. Uh, 2019, we really matched our revenue to the stated need so, uh, but again, uh, this is a modest yet significant uh, a, a new investment in our transportation infrastructure. Representative Petersburg. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for, for that, uh, that piece. Um, you know, that's exactly right. Uh, $600 million, uh, when you divide that by the approximately 600 million people in the state of Minnesota, which the new census may have that, that's $100 per every man, woman, and child uh, growth. And, and so we talk about, well, the gas tax only raises, I don't know, not what you said, $9 or something. But when you add in the sales tax uh, uh, for the Met Council and the other fees that are there, it, it grows even higher. And then when you add in that the fact that a lot of those taxes are going to be passed on to consumers through additional fees for transportation, et cetera, it, it does grow. Uh, you know, as an example, you, you mentioned that we're giving dollars to the Rondo community for planning. Well, how much is that? Well, it's $6 million. That's, that's a lot of planning, a lot of engineering. 
for a five block area. That's that's almost a, a million. That's a little over a million dollars a block. So so it's it's concerning that we we have that. And when we listen to the governor who says we need to help individuals with our funding, excuse me, with the recovery for COVID, uh, it seems to me that with all the federal dollars coming in, this is the last first. This should be the um, the time in which the last thing we think about is raising taxes and raising fees. It's not that we shouldn't be investing, and and I absolutely agree with you. Well, we do have some issues coming forward, but we also have not considered the idea that are currently our constitutionally dedicated funding sources for transportation in the near future is going to be so outdated that we're not going to be able to catch up. And and I don't see us really working forward towards a a better handle on that funding mechanism. And so I would really encourage you and, and others and, and myself to start working on what are the alternatives, what are our funding streams? Because right now, um, everything that we hear from, from your side is about reducing transportation usage, uh, reducing miles traveled, um, uh, go to more uh, mass public transit. All of that takes away from the actual funding source because public transit is a subsidized and and whereas it's subsidized somewhat from sales tax it it, it is also heavily on on um, property tax of course but they're all draining the limited amount of dollars that can be raised for roads and bridges and even if we lower the number of miles traveled by automobiles uh, we all want to get our stuff from um, eBay and Amazon sent to us and our groceries, all that comes by truck. Uh, and so that's gonna stay the same regardless of what we want unless we consume less. So I just have real concerns with this bill and the direction that it's taken, uh, but not in the effort, not in, in the intent. Uh, I know that you really are have passion for transportation and want to help all the way across the board. And I would, be, I would love to work on alternatives and other ideas, which I think I have. So uh, with that, Madam Chair, I will stop my comments. Okay, thank you, Representative. Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, for uh, Representative Hornstein, I want a direct yes or no answer to this question. Representative Hornstein, can you promise me and the members of the Minnesota House of Representatives that when you come back from conference committee with this bill, that there will be no electric vehicle surcharges in this bill, can you can you can you commit and promise that to us? Yes, that's that's All right. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Representative Horns. That's the sort of decisive leadership I like to hear. <laughs> These um, Republican colleagues around running around wanting to make my car more expensive. No, that's that's wrong. <laughs> so thank you, thank you for your fiscal conservatism, Representative uh, Hornstein. You know, Representative Hornstein, I have some good friends of mine who live in your district, and they are ivory tower big government never seen a tax increase there against liberals okay and they love frank hornstein mm -hmm. they love when they say they want someone who's progressive bold a bigger government frank <laughs> hornstein's their guy they love him and so i was talking with my friends and i said you know help me explain this through your eyes how how can i see this through this world of insisting on tax increases from, from a progressive perspective. And, and I wasn't supposed to do this, Representative Hornstein, but uh, one of them's a software developer and he gave me a filter. He gave me a filter that I can put on my camera <laughs> so that I can see the world the way progressive DFL liberals do. Mm. And so uh, I'm gonna activate the filter here for the first time. I wanna see what the world looks like. And okay, I got it on now. What is that? But, oh, it's raining money. Look at that, Representative Hornstein. That, that's why the DFL is taxing and spending so much. They think it's raining, it's raining money out there, Representative Hornstein. Look at that. That's why. Yeah, the DFL thinks it's raining money. That's why they want to raise taxes. But in seriousness, Representative Hornstein. Well, ma Madam Chair. Madam <laughs> Representative, Chair. Representative Hornstein. Madam Chair. I Too counted. It was, he, he, he rained a total of nine bills. That's nine dollars. That is exactly what the, or is approximately nine dollars. That's exactly what the average motorist will pay 
for better roads and bridges in the state of Minnesota, $9 per year. So I think it's a really good deal, especially since uh, for every dollar we spend on infrastructure, we get $3 in return. So I appreciate the, the, uh, the technology. You're a software guy, uh, Representative Garofalo. So yeah, $9 per motorist, good, good value for our tax dollar. Well, Madam I'm Chair, my, my friend, Representative Hornstein, uh, in addition to being wrong on, on the issues, your eyesight was poor too, because these are $100 bills, uh, mm -hmm. actually. So it's a much more, much more apt comparison for what our friends in the DFO want to do to us. But uh, if I could be just uh, a little bit more uh, serious about this, um, you know, this side of the aisle agrees with you that we need additional resources for infrastructure for our roads and for our bridges. And there's two different approaches to this. The first approach, uh, the highly spirited, passionate Hornstein approach involves raising taxes, many taxes which are regressive, hitting people with usage taxes, punitive financial measures is another way. The other way is that we repurpose existing dollars that are out there. And by the way, that second strategy, Oh, my dogs are so excited barking, they even agree with me. You hear that applause, Representative Hornstein? You hear the dogs barking in favor of uh, my proposal? Um, hold on one second here. <laughs> nice doggies. Uh, where was I in my third reading speech here? Uh, can you hear me, first of all? We can hear you, yes. All right, thank you. Um, so there's a better strategy, Representative Hornstein, and that is using repurposing existing dollars. And this is a proven strategy that works. In 2005, we passed a constitutional amendment to dedicate the motor vehicle sales tax. Uh, that successful endeavor has resulted in billions of dollars of additional investments in the roads and bridges without raising anyone's taxes by one penny, one penny. More recently in 2007, with the dedication of the auto repair tax. It's resulted in hundreds of millions of dollars and will be a growing revenue stream for roads and bridges. Now, I understand that for those who want to see government grow or they want to see, they measure the metric of success, the measure of success is raising taxes, that uh, they, this is unacceptable to them. But the reality is there are proven bipartisan solutions out there that exist that involve rededicating existing revenue streams to invest in our infrastructure. And at a time when the state government of Minnesota has never been more flush, it has $8 billion in additional federal money to dispense, a $1.5 billion budget surplus. Just yesterday, it was announced the state of Minnesota has had $500 million in additional revenue above forecast. This is on top of billions of dollars. There's no need to raise taxes on hardworking Minnesotans. There's no requirement to do that. The state of Minnesota has the resources. The government has more than enough resources to invest in our priorities. Um, Representative Hornstein, I'll be voting no on your bill, but remember two years ago, I did vote for your transportation bill when it came back from conference. And so I hope that it comes back in a very similar fashion as it did then. But Madam Speaker and members to the DFL, we don't need to be raising taxes when government's got all this money laying around. We need to be reducing the cost of government, not increasing it. I'll be voting no on this bill. Thank you. All right, members, I don't see any other questions? And so with that, uh, <clears throat> I would like to thank um, Chair Horstein for his vision, for his vision in creating a truly comprehensive state infrastructure that serves Minnesotans wherever they are and with whatever mode of transportation suits their needs best. Um, just thank you for your leadership and your vision. Uh, but I would like to offer Chair Horstein the last word. Um, Madam Chair, um, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you again, Representative Garofalo, for your comments. Um, you know, I just, and, and also Representative Petersburg, um, there's a lot to respond to. We don't really have time at, at this point to get into all of that. I did want to correct the record, though. I don't think the Commissioner of Transportation ever came to our committee and said they don't need additional resources. In fact, she warned us that if we didn't invest in our road and bridge infrastructure, we would see significant problems and deterioration as soon as the year 2030. And that uh, it, it, as long as we kick the can down the road and we don't provide new resources, uh, we are gonna continue to see that deterioration. 
Um, Representative Garofalo, um, you know, you are, are talking about a, a, a traditional, you talked about just shifting general fund money uh, to transportation. And, you know, that is just not a sustainable way to go. Uh, we know now from our experience of COVID that um, the general fund is very, very volatile. You know, we went from a, you know, four or five billion dollar deficit to a one point six billion dollar surplus, and you know, a matter of months. Uh, you know, we careened from deficits to surpluses. You know, from month to month, it almost seems. And so, what the transportation community is telling us is that we need that steady, dedicated, reliable stream of money, not what you are pro proposing, which is very, very volatile, and we can't do any planning, and we can't do any investing. And investing is important. We, this is the best bang for our public dollar we can get. We create tens of thousands of new jobs in a time of economic crisis. Uh, for every dollar we spend on roads, we get $2.50 back. For every dollar we spend on transit, we get $3 back. We get money in, in, in very, very important, significant ways that you may not see on a spreadsheet. Uh, if we don't uh, invest now, we're just going to pay later. These projects don't go away. That bridge project in Stern County, that road project in Winona County, that doesn't go away. That doesn't magically get fixed, but it gets more expensive if we put it off. So the fiscally responsible thing to do is to have this modest increase in new revenue. And Representative Garofalo, you were, uh, I appreciate it. You've taken some tough votes in your time on many issues and taken some stands that I think were not necessarily in um, uh, in sync with, with some of your party's leadership. In fact, in 2006, when you voted for a gas tax on the House floor, that really paved the way for that very significant piece of legislation in 2008 that Representative Leader passed. And we wouldn't have all those new bridges I talked about uh, without that. So the thing about transportation is we have a number of different funding streams. And so we very incrementally increase funding for those. Uh, and move the ball forward. And that's really what this bill does. It is a modest attempt to reach common ground, to make necessary and urgent investments, to match the federal dollars. Um, I know that the Republican uh, leadership in Washington is, they've said $650 billion is uh, what we should be doing on, on infrastructure in the uh, American Jobs Bill. And um, yeah, let's, you know, if, if we want to explore uh, regressivity, uh, there is progressivity in the, at the national level because they're, they're raising money progressively for that federal bill. Here in Minnesota, we have the constitutionally dedicated gas tax that goes back to 1925. That's how we do it here. That's how we do it in this bill. I ask for your green vote, your yes vote, so that we can invest in our uh, people we can invest in jobs, uh, we can invest in equity, we can invest in climate mitigation, climate change mitigation. Uh, this is a good bill. Uh, I appreciate your support and I appreciate today's discussion. Hi. Uh, so um, thank you, uh, Chair Hornstein. And there being no further discussion, Chair Hornstein renews his motion that House file 1684 as amended be recommended for placement on the general register and that nonpartisan staff be directed to make any and all necessary technical corrections. Ms. Sparkman, please take the roll. Chair Moran. Aye. Moran, aye. Vice Chair Olson. Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Garofalo. No. Garofalo, no. Representative Albright, excused. Representative Becker Finn. Aye. Becker Finn, aye. Representative Bernardi. Aye. Bernardi, aye. Representative Eckland. Aye. Eckland, aye. Representative Hansen. Aye. Hansen, aye. Representative Hassan. And aye. Hassan, aye. Representative Hertos. No. Hertos, no. Representative Hornstein. Aye. Hornstein, aye. Representative Johnson? No. Johnson, no. Representative Kresha? No. 
Cresha, no. Representative Liebling? Aye. Liebling, aye. Representative Lilly? Lilly, aye. Lilly, aye. Representative Mariani, excused. Representative Marquardt? Marquardt, aye. Marquardt, aye. Representative Miller? Miller, no. Miller, no. Representative Nash? Nash, no. Nash, no. Representative Nelson? Nelson, aye. Nelson, aye. Representative Noor? Noor, aye. Noor, aye. Representative O'Neill? O'Neill, no. O'Neill, no. Representative Pulowski? Pulowski, aye. Pulowski, aye. Representative Petersburg? Petersburg, no. Petersburg, no. Representative Pinto? Pinto, aye. Pinto, aye. Representative Schumacher? Schumacher, no. Schumacher, no. Representative Schultz? Schultz, aye. Schultz, aye. Representative Scott? Scott, no. Scott, no. Representative Sundin? Aye. Sundin, aye. 17 ayes, 10 nays. So there have been 17 ayes and 10 nays. The motion prevails. House file 1684 as amended is recommended for placement on the general register and nonpartisan staff are directed to make any necessary technical corrections. Again, thank you, Chair Hwasing. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, members.